Let's finish up this cylinder block. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg, welcome back to my machine shop. Today we're gonna to continue on working on the block for our Wallaby 30cc internal combustion engine. Last time we did the water jacket, today we're gonna machine in the features on the top and we get to play with the new boring head from my mill. That'll be fun. All right, without further ado, let's just jump in and look at the print. This is our drawing for the Wallaby block. We're gonna be machining these holes here on the top of the block. So let's start with the large holes for the cylinder sleeves. But I did want to point out datum planes. We've got datum plane B marked here, which is this side, datum plane A, which is this side. And these are planes in the model that all of the measurements are made from. Datum planes are particularly important when we're making machining operations from different sides of the part and we have to flip it over. So for example, we want to machine all of these features on the top in one setup. That is, we don't want to take it out of the vise, put it back in, and try to reestablish our X and Y axis points. We want to put it in there, machine everything all at once. Then when we turn this part over and machine in these additional features on the bottom, we need to make sure they're lined up properly with the features we machine from the top. And the way we do that is, is by selecting datum planes and measuring our X and Y axis from the same surfaces. This hole here is 8.75 from this edge here. This one is 2.25 from this edge here. Both of them are offset from this edge by 781. They're one and an eighth inch through holes. And then they've got a little recess here of 1.188, 1 16th deep plus the 10 thousandths we've left on the top. One last note, I put some die kim on the top of here. I put some marks around these holes here, you can see. I want to rough this out a little bit more to come closer to this material, so I can only need to use the boring head for the last final passes. Okay, let's jump onto the mill. We clamp the block into the vise, tapping it down onto parallels and looking to ensure that when we drill all the way through these large holes, we don't hit the parallels. We touch off the Y on this forward face and touch off the X on the right hand face, mirroring what we see of our data planes in the drawing. Then we advance our mill table over to the proper X and Y dimension and lock down all three axes to ensure our machine is as rigid as possible. I used a one inch drill bit. It was the largest one that I had that easily remained within my scribed marks for my roughing limit. I'm running the spindle at about 250 RPM. I'm keeping an eye on the size of the chips coming off. Off. With such a large drill bit and a large diameter, we need to run it this slow to keep the surface speed of the cutting edge in the proper range. I load the boring head into the spindle and then move the micrometer until the cutting edge just comes up against the edge of the hole that we just drilled with our roughing drill bit. I take a very fine first cut And then we continue to cut all the way down through the bottom, maintaining perfect concentricity of our two cylinder sleeve holes. Of course, being careful not to hit the mill vise. And then using my telescoping gauge, measure my starting diameter. Still running my spindle at about 250 RPM. And I'm advancing the cutter about 10 thousandths per cut meaning the size of the hole is increasing 20 thousandths per cutting operation. When I get within about 10 thousandths of my final diameter, I break up my micrometer and begin making much finer passes. Here I'm ending up at 118 thousandths, where my target is one inch and 125 thousandths. 
We're looking for one inch and 125 thousandths. We're at one inch and 124.5. That's as close as we're going to get. Let's move on to machining the little recess. First, we need to establish our Z zero point. We're going to do that by using this little strip of brass and zero out our quill DRO. The strip of brass is 25 thousandths. We want the we want the recess to be a sixteenth of an inch, plus our extra ten thousandths of material on top of the block comes out to about ninety eight thousandths. So we move the quill down this distance. and make several cuts to bring our outside diameter to 1.188. <laughs> All right, one down. Then we move our mill table over here to line up with our second cylinder sleeve hole and do it again. Yeah, looking good. So we're gonna do the water jacket holes next the dimensions, uh, again, are going to be measured off of the, from datum A and datum B. Uh, with a spot drill each point and then drill with a 3 16th drill. This should be a straightforward operation for us. the drilling of the five coolant holes on the top of the block went pretty well. Let's turn now to the 440 head bolts. There's 10 of them. So we're going to spot drill, drill, and tap each of these holes. One thing I'd like to call your attention to especially is that these three outside holes are all a different distance from the edge. They do not line up. So note that each one has its own dimension here. Same is true with these over here. Okay, let's go spot drill, drill, and tap our head bolt holes. I think I'll show you a couple of them and then finish off the rest off camera. Set the quill to your hand. This is my tap guide. I'm trying to see the tap guide there in the quill. And then I, of course, tap manually. So there's several things I could do better here. First of all, this is a blind hole. And I only drilled the hole about as deep as I wanted the threads to go. Instead of 0.3 inches, I should have drilled it about 0.5. The next thing I'm doing wrong is I'm not clearing the chips. I need to turn in, back off, turn in, back off, and then pull the tap all the way out, wipe off the chips, and then resume tapping. Ah, oh, expletive. So this video was getting a little long, so I showed how I recovered from this broken tap in a separate video entitled Part 2C, Recovering from a Broken Tap. Perhaps you've already seen it. I also cover how I set up the boring bar and talked a little bit, maybe too much, about versioning. So now we're going to flip the part over and drill the last six holes to complete the Wallaby cylinder block. The most important marks on this page are these datum marks here. What we've, what we've done is, is we've taken the block and we've rotated it this way, maintaining the front pointing in the same direction and flipping our datum from facing us to facing backwards. We want to touch off on the exact same datums to drill these holes because we want to maintain the relationship between these holes and the holes that have already been drilled. Remember the datums and remember to touch off on the correct surfaces. The rest of it is going to be a step and repeat of what we've done before. Let's go ahead and finish the block.
There's the bottom machining complete. So let's go ahead and deburr these holes. And call the bottom done. There's one more thing I want to do. If you notice in the picture here, there's a countersink around this hole here. I need to countersink this area so this head will fit flat against the bottom. The way I'm going to do this is I've got this little Dremel head. It's a quarter of an inch in diameter at the bottom. Put this in here like so and then run this up and down to create a flat there. Well, I think congratulations are in order. We finished the first component on our 30cc Wallaby engine, the cylinder block. It was a fun journey and I appreciate you tagging along with me. I continue to learn things. I played with a boring head for the first time and it worked out much slicker than I thought it would. Certainly nothing to be afraid of. And I broke its hat, but we were able to recover and save the part. Next time, we're gonna tackle the timing case assembly. It houses the timing gears. Thanks for tagging along. I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Until next time, take care.